mathematics, the basis to nearly all subjects, the precursor of architecture, models, and statistical representations in the world, and the subject of all the pain and suffering of nearly all students in the world. Now math as a fundamental subject itself isn't that complicated, just the computation of all things in life. However, if you continue in school, it starts off relatively easy and then ramps up very quickly. Like in grade 10, you're still learning general math, and the next thing you know, you're learning calculus with five different Greek letters that resembles English class. And as the yearly agony of school has recently rolled back around, I thought, what better way to celebrate this prison than a video explaining one of the most foundational subjects. Counting numbers is one of the first concepts that you, an astute mathematician, will learn. <laughs> you're probably at the age where you just figured out that you're actually able to use your legs, and mommy is like, Alright you little sh you better learn how to count. And so you learn about the base 10 counting system from 0 to 9. And so, as soon as you master this skill set, mommy then asks again, Aw oh, honey, how many fingers am I holding up? Um, a um, mommy, um, one, two, that's why dad divorced you! Now once you can count how many digits your bank account has, you realize you can't actually count it because you haven't learned negative numbers. But with all this counting, hmm, there must be something I can do with this. Well, you're in luck my friend because now we're introducing operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Addition is basically thinking to yourself, hmm, my black hole looking at had 10 Krispy Kreme donuts already. Might as well eat two more to finish the box. Now, what about subtraction, an operation most often mastered by orphans? Now, multiplication and division are a bit more complicated to visualize, but it's essentially repeated addition and asking how many groups in total there are. For example, let's take basketball. One shot is worth three points, and then you took 10 shots in a game. How many points? have you scored? Well the answer is 30 because you did 3 times 10, but you also just realized that was a dream and you actually cooked at 5 5. Now algebra is finding the unknown of something and in mathematics it's represented most commonly with x, which is true because where the f is my x? You're also indirectly introduced to the function where one input should derive one output and this is most often seen in the form y is equal to mx plus b and later on y can be interchanged with f of x. Now function can be thought of as a consequence or an output of something. If x is a certain value the output or y will be your answer. Now let's take a look at a quick example. You have no bitches. Every time you talk to a girl you still have no bitches. How can we algebraically model this. Well, let y equal the number of bitches you will have and let x equal the number of girls you've talked to. Now as x approaches infinity, y will remain zero. So the answer is... Now once you mastered algebra, the x in your equation receives a little too, now it becoming quadratic. Now quadratic equations have the graphical representation of your hairline, which is honestly cheating whenever you need to remember it. Now it comes in the base form of ax squared plus bx plus c, and here you learn the y and x intercepts, points of the equation where one or the other variable hits the axes respectively. Now there's another equation called a vertex form in which you can rewrite it as, but I'm literally five years removed from this concept to be bothered to remember it. What more can I say? My nose trigonometry, algebra, ergonometry, and everything to end with tree. Now I warn you that it's going to get hard, and trust me, it's now bricked up. Trig is one of the hardest concepts to grasp in high school, and you start off with a simple acronym, so Katoa, or sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. How are the creators of Bill Cipher fucking Gravity Falls really said this ain't enough? Let's throw a f curveball and introduce cotangent, secant, and arctangent, each of which have increasingly tragic looking graphs. Now apart from this, there's so many f***ing laws that EDP can't even follow them all, such as the sine and cosine law. Now statistics can be condensed down as a study of chance based on a population, the entire amount of something versus the sample space, a part of the population taken to study. Now statistics can be applied in a wide range of scenarios from disease prevention, the analytics of an animal population, to the chance your dad will say, 
Honey, grab me my beer. You learn the differences between permutation and combinations, the total amount of possibilities in a scenario. For example, how many ways can I arrange a deck of 52 cards, which would be of course 52 factorial, but let's say the question says you don't put the cards back in. Well, you might as well just fill out a McDonald's job application if you encounter this problem. Finally, we have hiked to the summit of mathematics, the peak, the epitome of high school suffering. And then you realize, wait a second, derivatives isn't that hard. Light work, no reaction. Well, scratch that. The process of limits and this big ass formula to get you to learn calculus is pretty difficult, but once you reach derivatives, it's actually not that bad. The power, the chain, the product, and the quotient rule. Now that is until you finish high school math and then you realize multivariable calculus in three dimensions exists. And then I wanna drop, I mean, you wanna drop out of university. So 